to another episode of Children's Hour. In this series, we are talking about celebrating the arts. What are some of your favorite artsy things to do? I love to title. I love to make music. We love to dance. In this episode, we're going to learn about collages with one of our favorite illustrators, Eric Carl. Shall we ask Miss Marva if she could read some stories and do some activities with us? And maybe Miss Allie could do some more fun yoga. Hello, welcome to today's Scarecrow Children's Video Hour. We're going to learn about amazing illustrators this week. It's Eric Carl. Please join us. Let's read a book. And so this is my very favorite illustrator, Eric Carle. And I like a lot of books, but he is my truly, truly favorite illustrator. There's some pictures here that I have that I want to share with you. I think it's really fun to know what an illustrator who makes the books that you read look like. And actually, Eric Carle is a grandpa. So there's some pictures of him when he was little, but there's also a picture of him now, and he's a grandpa age. He also has a really cool place in Connecticut, a whole museum for children's books. And all the time they're changing the, the um, illustrations that they carry in there. So you and your parent might want to go online and look for the Eric Carle Picture Book Museum because it's pretty cool. So this is a picture that Eric Carle did of himself thinking about the Hungry Caterpillar. There's a picture of him in his studio and a picture of him making one of his collages. All of his work is done by collage, pieces of paper that are glued down. That's called collage. And then he adds details with markers or crayons or um, oil pastels. So here are some pictures of him. I just wanted to introduce you really quick because I think Eric Carl is really neat. All right, here's Eric Carl's first story that we're going to read. It's called Eric Carl Friends. Eric Carl Friends is actually a story about Eric Carl when he was very little. He had a friend, he moved away, but when he was a grown up, he got a chance to meet that friend again. So, even though it doesn't say that in in the story exactly, I wanted you to know that when he was a grown up, like a grandpa age almost, he got a chance to re-meet his friend from when he was a little kid. Once there were two friends who were always together. Together they played and ran and danced and told each other secrets. But one day the boy was all alone. His friend was gone. She had moved far away. I miss her, he said. Wherever she is, I must find her. And then he took a deep breath, counted to ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jumped into a swift river. The river was cold. The river was wide. So it took a long time to swim across it. When he got to the other side, it was already dark. The stars watched over him as he fell asleep. Zzzz. The next morning, he saw a tall mountain ahead. He started up one side of it. The path was steep. It was hard work. Finally, he got to the top, and then he slid right down the other side. Plunk! The boy landed in a broad meadow. It was a hot day. The grass was dewy, damp, and cool. He strolled through it. Ah! <sighs> of a sudden it began to rain. Splish, splash. He had to dash through the falling drops. After a while, the boy felt tired. He fell asleep and dreamed that he was floating on a cloud. He woke up in a deep forest. Dark shadows danced around him. Eek! He rushed out of the woods into a flower garden. He gathered a bouquet. And there was his friend. I found 
you, he shouted. I knew you'd come, she said. And together they played and ran and danced and told each other secrets and got married. Here I am with a friend in Syracuse, New York. I was three years old and so was she. My German mother took this picture. She wrote Juni, which means June, 1932 in the corner. When I was six, I moved far away and we never saw each other again. I often think about my long ago friend and wonder what happened to her. Well, he actually found her. What's craft? What you need. Paint with container or ink pad. Found objects. Sponges. Paper. This is an example of the way that Eric Carle makes the papers that he uses for his collages. We're going to use some of the paper that I made to make a bird collage after I show you this. These are various printing techniques with things that you may have at home. You can use acrylic paint, you could use tempera paint, you could make homemade paint. Um, you can buy these in the store or online, or you can go online with your grown-up, and you and your grown-up can um, look for how to make homemade paint, too. So, you will need some kind of thing to catch your drips. This just is a lid. I am using sponges to make little kind of print pads almost. So some of this, if you have a nice big ink pad at home, you could actually do this with ink pads too. Um, so I'm gonna put my paint on top of these old scungy sponges. They're perfect for this. I have a bunch of different things that I just went around my house and I went, what could I put in paint? And would, what would make an interesting an interesting print. Some of the things I've used in the past that I don't have with me are things like bubble wrap and egg cartons. You can also use toilet paper rolls. They're good for making prints. Um, thread spools. If your family sews, you may have some thread spools. So it can be kind of fun to go around your house with your grown up and go, hey, can we try this? Can we try this? Um, this is what I just brought with me today. So this, you will probably have totally different things. I had the top twin marker. I have a cup that's a used cup. So that's a good thing to use cups for. Keep your used like plastic cups are great to keep. You can print with them. You can use them to clean your brushes in. I had this old toy. And it's great because it has two different shapes. It has a pokey side and a circly side, and it makes some really cool prints. I also had this thing. It is from the inside of register tape. Um, so it's kind of shaped a little bit like a spool too. Your grown up may have a spool. You might wanna see if they have one because they're kind of fun to print with. And the last thing is that I took an old plastic card and I cut it up into shapes. So this one looks kind of ziggy zaggy. This one is good for straight lines. And I tried this one for making pointed lines. It kind of worked. So I'll show you as we go along what it does. All right, once you have your paint, the things you want to print with, your sponges, you need something to print on then you can get started. So all your materials are here. Now you're going to take your paint, oop, blop, and you're going to put it on the sponge. And I'm gonna do both of my paints at once. If you mix your paints together, you're gonna to get a new color. So that's why I put these on separate things. I don't wanna mix my colors, not yet. Maybe later, but not right now. And then all you do is dip into the paint, dip, 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 and maybe dab a little bit and then push down. And what's interesting with this one is this is with a lot of paint and then the, these are with less paint. Sometimes the really cool ones are the ones 
where there's less paint. Then you can go back and get some more. You might want to try making overlaps. Sometimes that's fun. And if there's a lot of paint, sometimes you can, can even go back, get some of it, and spread it out a little bit more. There you go. So there's that one. And basically, they all work the same. You dip it in, and then you just kind of practice poking it, poking around with it. So with the big thing, I will have to turn it all the way around so I get paint on all the edges. Like that. And then... Ta -da! So that's the bottom. I can also use the top. And get bigger circles. Now you could either have one big piece of paper and do all of it on one, or you could have smaller pieces and try each individual type. So that's what I did with the ones that we're going to use for the collage later. I did each of my printing on different ones. Here's orange paper, but with the same thing printing. So that's another thing you can do is use colored paper for your background. So I wanted to show you how these guys work too. These, I draw like that. So there, they make kind of an interesting line. Also, these are examples of using that. See, I make kind of a tiger thing by having an orange background using black on it. And then I painted the background of this yellow and used some brown on it for a different one. Now, here's my favorite guy. I can do both the little dots and the bigger dots. Now that, I did a combination of little dots and big dots and then I added another color so I got really fancy so this is so I could go over to my dark one now and add dark over the top to kind of accent it it looks kind of cool so that's something you can do is do layers of stuff now I wanted to show you, just wanted to talk to you about some other ones that I did that I don't have the thing with necessarily. These teeny tiny circles, those were made with straws. So if you have some uh, straw from a drink, save your straws. They're good. They're good for making little circles. They're also good These lines were actually made by a straw that I used kind of a little bit like a brush. So straws are really fun to use for art projects in lots of ways. Save all your straws. You can wash them out, use them for lots of stuff. Beads and painting, all kinds of stuff. This is the last one I'll show you. You can also actually use the sponge as something to print with. If it has a lot of paint in it, it's just going to be goopy. But if it has less paint in it, it makes a really interesting texture. Don't push very hard until you start running out of paint. When you start running out of paint, you can push a little harder. But at first, you just push very lightly. So that makes a pretty interesting texture too. Hope you try this out because this is one of my favorite things to do. I make cards this way. I make gift wrap this way and I use the paper I make also for collages. Thanks. Let's watch a video. This is art. And this is art. This is art. Art and his art. Can you tell them apart?
When art is in play, get out of art's way. He zigs. He zags. He really gets wired. There's no stopping art. When art is inspired. When art is inspired. He draws scribbles that squiggle. Dots, 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 dots. Red, yellow, and blue. Splotches with blotches, and the curl is cute. Art stares at the paper and uses his noodle to conjure up a perfect doodle. And doodles need houses, trees, and cool cars. A dog. A moon. And a billion bright stars. Art draws and draws till he flops in a heap. And among his creations, he falls fast asleep. Now, let's be quiet to try something we've heard. A picture is worth a thousand words. And when he awakes, a little bit later, huh? Art sees his art <gasps> on the refrigerator, held there by magnet stars and a heart put there by mother, cause mother loves art.
Let's read a book. Eric Carle's book, Slowly, 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 Said the Sloth. Slowly, 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 a sloth crawled along a branch of a tree. Slowly, 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 the sloth ate a leaf. Slowly, 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 the sloth fell asleep. Slowly, 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 the sloth woke up. All day long, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. All night long, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. Even when it rained, the sloth hung upside down in the tree. Why are you so slow? The howler monkey asked one day, but the sloth didn't answer. Why are you so quiet? The caiman asked, but the sloth didn't answer. Why are you so boring? The anteater asked, but the sloth didn't answer. Tell me, said the jaguar, why are you so lazy? The sloth thought and thought and thought for a long, long, long time. Finally, the sloth replied, it is true that I am slow, quiet, and boring. I am lackadaisical, I dawdle, and dilly-dally. I am also unflappable, languid, stoic, impassive, sluggish, lethargic, placid, calm, mellow, laid-back, and, well, slothful. I am relaxed and tranquil, and I like to live in peace. But I am not lazy. Then the sloth yawned and said, That's just how I am. I like to do things slowly, slowly, slowly. What's craft? What you need? Wider color paper, scissors, glue, marker. This is what we're going to use the prints that we made for. Now, if you can't paint at home, that's okay. You can use any kind of paper that you have lying around. This is a circle bird. And while we're making the circle bird, I'm going to talk to you about a thing called fractions. Fractions are a part of a whole. And as we cut, you'll see what I mean. So here's the circle bird. And now let's get started. You'll need some different colored papers that you like together. So when I was making this, I had some orange paper and some pink paper. So at least two different colors of paper is fun to have. You'll need scissors, some kind of glue. I like glue stick for this. And a paper that you want to use as your background paper. I just have a white piece of paper. Then if you have just a white piece of paper, when you're done doing your circle bird, you can add drawings around it and make it more fancy. So part, the other thing you will need is something that's round. So that you're going to trace around. If you have a circle stencil, that would work. You could use a cup. You could use a roll of tape. I'm going to use a roll of tape. And I'm going to take these papers that I made with printmaking earlier. And I think I'm going to go for some pink and orange because I love pink and orange. So I decide which part I want to be my body and which part I want for the details for all the other pieces. So I think that my body is going to be orange and yellow. So I put my thing I'm going to trace, I put it down, trace around it, like that. So that's going to be my body. I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going, I like the texture. This is what happened when I printed with my sponge, and I really like that texture. So I'm going to use that for my details. 
So I'm going to, again, trace my circle. When you need two circles. Now the circles could be different sizes, but it's easier if you just use the thing that you already have. Then I'm going to cut these shapes out. Now when I'm cutting quick, I cut away all the extra stuff first. I'm just going to get rid of all this extra stuff. Go away, extra stuff. All right. And then I can go in for that detailed cut. Follow those lines. There you go. One, two circles. Hey, tricky paper. All right. There's my two circles. Okay, I had decided this was my body. So I can put my body right there on the paper. We've got more cutting to do for the details. So put your body somewhere in the middle of your paper because you're going to need the space to add all those details to. I just put the glue down on the thing I'm gluing down. And it's important to get the glue around the edges so that it will stay on the paper. And then you can press it down all around the edge. Okay, so there's your body. You're all ready. Now I'm going to talk to you about fractions. So this is a whole circle. Now, Two halves make a whole circle. So I folded my circle in half. See that? Two halves make one whole. A half and a whole. So I'm going to cut that fold where I folded the circle in half. Right. I'm going to cut right on that. And now I have two half pieces. They go together to make a whole. Now we're going to do something really tricky. We're going to take a half and cut it even smaller because we want an eighth for our tail. So to make a quarter, we fold a half in half. Okay, so there's a quarter. And I cut it. It takes four quarters to make one whole circle. Now, to make an eighth, we have to cut a quarter in half. What? Yep, that's what we're doing. I fold it in half, and I'm cutting the fold. And that is an eighth. And it takes eight eighths to make one whole circle. So I put my eighth and my eighth together. There's a quarter. I put a quarter together and a quarter together. That's a half. Ah, I put two halves together. I get a whole. So you just learned a little math there too. Now what we're going to do is use the half as the wing on your bird. Go ahead and glue the back of it. And the bird's wing is going to be on the top. So there's your birdie's wing. See, just like this guy. This one was a little bit smaller circle. This one's bigger. Now I'm going to take a quarter on this one and make his tail. I just glue that down on his bum. There you go. And then the last thing we need to do is give your bird a beak. 
and the beak is like the nose or the mouth. It, that's what it uses for eating. So I'm going to use that eighth that we made to be the beak. The beak is on this side. So there you go. Now all you need to do is add some details. Should your birdie need some eyes? Now you could put just one eye. You could put two eyes. You decide what looks best on that. You, you could leave the beak the way it is, or you could put a line down the middle of it. I'm going to do that just to make my beak look like two pieces, which beaks are usually two pieces. Then I'm going to add legs. Now, my birdie has really long legs, so I'm making long lines for the leg, and then I'm going to give it one, two, three little lines for its claws, or its little birdie toes. And then you can add other things in, like this bird, I think, is going to be standing on a branch. So I'm going to draw a branch for my birdie to be standing on. There you go. It's a bird collage. Just like Eric Carl. Eric Carl does the same thing. He draws his, he decides what he's making. He takes his paper and designs it and then cuts the shapes out, draws them and cuts them out. So this is just like what Eric Carl does. Let's watch a video. One warm day, from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Hi, bubbled a spittlebug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. 
but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. How are you, hum the bumblebee, flying from flower to flower? The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good evening, whirred a dragonfly, gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. A luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She, too, was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time, he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. So much for watching with us. Please be sure to check out other episodes in our series of Celebrating the Arts. Yeah.